What's going on? My name is David Page and I am a professional guitarist and singer and my wife and I just finished our contract on board the Carnival Elation. Working on a cruise ship is a really fun and exciting new opportunity for someone. And if you're a guitarist and you're looking for what gear to bring on the ship, I was in the same position. So I wanna share a little bit of what I experienced. When you book a gig on land, you have the opportunity to advance with the venue and figure out what kind of gear you need to bring and you're responsible for as the musician coming in to perform. But that's not the case with cruise ships. Heading into a contract, you have very little communication with anyone who's actually on the ship at the time. So in the time leading up to our contract on the Carnival Elation, I was feeling really nervous. I was feeling like I didn't know what was expected of me and I didn't know what I should or shouldn't bring and I ended up bringing way too much. One thing that I didn't realize headed into my contract is that the Carnival Elation actually has a no guitar amps policy. So if I was relying on one to be on the ship, it wouldn't have been there. And if I had planned on bringing my own, I wouldn't have even been able to use it. That means as a guitarist, you're gonna have to do one of two things. You can either run all of your guitar amplifier processing, pedals and whatnot through your computer and an interface, or you could bring some sort of multi-effects processor that has amp modeling like an Axe FX or a Kemper or even a Line 6 Helix. However, I would really advise you to not rely on whether or not the ship is going to have an amplifier for you and bringing your own amplifier could have issues of its own with traveling with the amplifier and getting it to the ship and whether or not the ship will even allow you to use it. That may seem like a silly or arbitrary rule, but most of the spaces that we were performing in on the ship were used for multiple different things. The drama bar was right outside of the casino and it actually directly opened up into a walkway between the comedy club and the main theater. And the atrium bar actually was also home to the shore excursions desk and the guest services desk. And if you went up one deck, that was the area where everyone was waiting to enter for their dinner reservations at one of the main dining rooms. And it was also where the piano bar was. And on the other side was the library. Oftentimes with guitar amps, you have to crank them in order to get them to sound the way you want them to. So in order to be able to control the amount of volume being pumped into these given spaces, the ship really prefers you to come in with some sort of amp modeling instead of an amplifier. This rule or preference was something that I never had an opportunity to communicate with anybody on the ship about, so I didn't actually know, and I'm really glad that I happened to prefer to perform with my Kemper anyway. Oftentimes the ships will have amps for you and if you get to have that option, that's awesome. You can always bypass the amp modeling part of your multi-effects processor. However, I would absolutely plan for you not to have an amplifier so that you can still perform the way you want to perform on stage. So let's talk about the gear that I brought to the contract. First I had my mono case with my two electric guitars in it. One of them was this Les Paul right here and the other is my Fender TC90. It's a Telecaster that's semi-hollow and has P90s in it. It's a great guitar. If at all possible, you'll wanna bring an extra guitar just in case something goes wrong, because it'll be really difficult to get another guitar while you're on the ship. If you're just bringing one guitar, I recommend bringing one that's as versatile as possible. And that's why I used my Telecaster as my primary guitar throughout the contract, because it sounds great on clean channel, but it also sounds great for the heavy distorted leads. You'll want to make sure that you bring plenty of picks and also a few packs of guitar strings. You can always order strings to be delivered to the ship or when you stop in your home port, you can get off the ship and go to a store. Maybe some of the ports that you're stopping at will have guitar strings as well. I would say you're more likely to have that in your home port than you are at one of your stops along the way. The other option for a guitarist is to possibly go with an acoustic option. If you're gonna do that, there will be DI boxes available to you. You'll just need your quarter inch cable and you'll be ready to go. For a bass player, I would also recommend something like a Kemper or an XFX or even a Sansamp pedal. That way you're gonna have options for your tone for your bass, but you're not gonna be reliant on whether or not you can actually have a bass amplifier on the stage. Just like every other musician out there, I've got real books and fake books and 
chord charts and binders filled with charts, just filled. These are gonna be a pain in the ass to travel with. They're also not convenient to find the charts you're looking for. It's just not gonna be a fun time. I highly, highly suggest bringing some sort of tablet. I use an iPad. You could put all your charts in it. Uh, if you're gonna be performing music on a cruise ship, you're gonna need a lot of songs. So you're gonna need a way to organize and pull up charts quickly and be able to read them. As a vocalist, I always, always, always recommend bringing your own microphone. That's something that takes up absolutely no space in your bags, and it's also something that will keep you uh, safe. It'll keep you from singing with other people's germs. COVID's a thing, so it just keeps you safe and it keeps everything sanitary, and you also get the sound that you're looking for. If you don't happen to own your own microphone, that's okay. There are plenty of microphones on the ship and just make sure that you bring some sort of like Lysol wipe or something like that and take care of yourself. Stephanie will also play tambourine and shaker from time to time, so we brought our own. We just wanted to make sure that we weren't relying on whether or not there would be percussive instruments available to us to perform with every time, and we just brought our own. You will have an opportunity to do a sound check with the audio techs on board. It might be right as your set's about to start, but you will get a chance to do that. You'll be able to get your mix dialed in and your monitors dialed in as well. As far as monitoring goes, there's a couple of different options for you. You could choose to just use the stage wedge monitors that are available on the ship, or if you wanted to bring in your monitors, that's okay too. It's really important to take note of all the levels on all the devices to make sure that in the event that you need to turn up or down a little bit, you know where you are so you're not throwing off the entire mix. You could go with something as simple and easy as like this X5 that we have. This model's great because it's so compact and it's easy to transport. All you need to do is get a monitor send signal from the mixer and plug that into one side of this device. And the other side is just a normal body pack. You plug your headphones in and you're good to go. Because of all the video content that we create and because I really enjoy doing this, we wanted to bring our own in-ear mixer, which would have our in-ear mixes saved every single time. And I have the ability to multi-track record all of our performances. Another benefit to this system is that we were able to control our own mix on our own mixer using my iPad. Also as a duo, we often perform with tracks. We use a cable that splits from an eighth inch stereo to two quarter inch mono signals. That way we're separating the left side, which is all of the click and cues from the right side, which is all of the track information. That way, inside our in-ear mix, we're able to turn up or down the click track and make sure that that is not going to the house so that the audience never sees it except for the one time where we had a click track mishap. Check out this video for that. If you happen to need any special cables or adapters in order to make your show run properly, you'll wanna bring those. But there's no need to bring XLR cables. The ship will have plenty that you can use. We brought our Behringer XR mixer and our two Sennheiser wireless in-ear monitor systems in a flight case that was really easy to transport and it kept all of our gear safe while we flew. We were actually even able to check this as a bag and I made sure to put an air tag in it so just in case anything happened, I would know exactly where it was and would be able to locate it and get it to us as quickly as possible. I also highly suggest getting some sort of power strip from the ship. Bringing your own could potentially cause power issues, but if you ask one from the ship, they will be able to provide one for you. By using a power strip, you'll be able to make sure that everything that you need for your performance is able to get plugged in at the same time on the stage. For our performances, we need power for the Behringer XR18, our two wireless in-ear transmitters, my Kemper stage profiler, my laptop, which does all of our audio recording, and even one of our cameras. My Sony ZV-E10 actually needs to have an external dummy battery power source in order to make sure that it can last for the entire length of one of our sets. If I just turn on the camera and let it go, the battery will last about 30 minutes. We wanted to make sure that we captured everything and so we used a couple of different GoPros, we used this Sony camera, and we multi-track recorded everything onto my laptop. The biggest advice that I can give you is assume that you will not be able to advance any of the gear with the ship and bring everything that you will need in order to make sure that you can put on the performance that you want to put on. 
if you're looking to use some sort of amplifier, I would actually suggest that you look into some sort of amp modeler instead of an amp. Whatever you end up bringing for your contract, just make sure that you're aware of your baggage allowance and the weight allowance so that you're not overpacking and you're bringing exactly what you need to bring. If you have any other questions about what you should or shouldn't bring, feel free to leave those in the comments below. I look forward to reading through those and getting to know what you guys are up to. See you in the next video. Are you ready?